Good afternoon to you and welcome to Match of the Day Live from Old Trafford for the Today League game between Manchester United and Tottenham Hotspur. The priority for United's new manager, Alex Ferguson, is to get his team out of the relegation zone by solving two problems. First, to find a prolific goal scorer and secondly, to stiffen up his defence, particularly in the centre and in the air. Spurs' record this season under David Fleet is better away from home and they should be comfortable in Old Trafford's luxurious surroundings comparable to those at White Hart Lane. Yet United have no player to compare with Clive Allen, whose scoring record this season is remarkable. 21 goals in 21 games. He's the son of Les Allen, a much underrated striker in Spurs' double-winning team of the early 60s. Les could score, and his son Clive has that invaluable knack of arriving in goal-scoring positions on schedule. But whatever his secret is, he keeps it to himself because the Spurs' next high scorer is Chris Waddle with five goals. Of course, all eyes will be on England's Brian Robson returning for his first full game under Alex Ferguson after yet another hamstring injury. And as we've learned this week, he's an expensive player to have on the touchline. Well, let's hear how Trevor Brooking sees the game developing. Trevor. Well, I've been looking forward to this game. Uh, I saw Spurs last week involved in a little classic with Nottingham Forest, and uh, they play half as well as they did there. And Manchester United with Brian Robson, who we just saw there touching his toes, I should think his hamstrings being warmed up for the previous 45 minutes, but it's a big game for him. Gordon Strachan back, and probably as interesting as anything, Norman Whiteside uh, playing up front today. So how are you coming down? I mean, none of this... Uh, well, no sitting on the fence. I think you've given me so much stick, Jim. I'll have to go for a result today. Uh, and I think with the three new lads back, a uh, bit of atmosphere at home, I think it's going to be very close, but I'm going for Man United by the odd goal. Well, that's positive enough, and I hope it's the odd goal of about five or six yeah, or seven. Yes. <laughs> well, now a result from this morning's FA Cup second round. It's Notts County nil, Middlesbrough one. For what looks to be an extremely close game, let's join Laurie McMenemy and match commentator John Motson. Yes, an expectant mood inside Old Trafford for three reasons, I think. The midweek outburst at the shareholders meeting up here hasn't fallen on deaf ears. A United victory today would move them up four places in the first division table. And the return of that trio, Gordon Strachan, Norman Whiteside and Brian Robson, means Alex Ferguson's team sheet is more in keeping with United's pedigree. As Trevor Brooking said, Norman Whiteside will play his first match under the new manager in a striking role because Frank Stapleton is dropped despite agreeing a new three-year contract this week. As for Tottenham Hotspur, they welcome back Richard Goff at the heart of their defence, where I fancy he'll be partnered by Gary Mabbott with Graham Roberts possibly reverting to midfield. Up front, Nico Klaassen is still injured. Young Sean Close is rested. So Clyde Allen will look for support from a five-man midfield in which Tony Galvin returns after missing nine games with a cartilage operation. Well, there are two Allens and two Thomases on that caption, which might present uh, a moment or two of hesitation for myself and my co-commentator today, Laurie McMenemy, the Sunderland manager. I'm sure you can handle all the names, John, but uh, I'm very interested here to see how Ozzy Ardiles performs. Uh, he's once again proven everyone wrong by staying... Well, he's the foreign player that stayed the longest. He's proved that he didn't just come take the money and run. He's graced the first division for quite a while now. He's an extremely skillful player. He may not last the whole 90 minutes, but I think he's important to David Fleet in this transitional period his experience will help in the midfield, which I think today might be packed with players. And he'll know just when to strike the balance between attacking and defending. And he loves the big stage, and he won't get a bigger one than this today. Spurs' record here has not been particularly good. Clive Allen there with 21 goals. We'll be hoping they can improve on their last eight league visits, six defeats and two draws. Although I must say they've won two cup ties here in that period. Do you see them uh, doing it today, Laurie? I think that Tottenham will expect Manchester to come at them with all guns blazing away early on and they will look to hold uh, what they've got until uh, the steam goes out of Manchester United and if it's nil-nil after half an hour, I think that the longer the game goes they'll fancy themselves uh, to get a win but it's an intriguing situation with all the new players trying to impress the new manager, uh, Alec Ferguson 
but don't forget David Pete's still a new manager and Tottenham want to continue the good away form for him but I think that it just depends who gets the early grip on the midfield well, a quick shot there of Alex Ferguson signing autographs it's a match he's been looking forward to I know that and it's just worth pointing out perhaps that there was a time when Alex was linked with the Tottenham job um, after Keith Birkinshaw left White Hart Lane anyway he's now very much the manager of Manchester United and his team in their red shirts and white shorts will be defending the Stretford end in the first half as David Hutchinson from Harrogate gets the match started Chris Waddle for Tottenham that's Paul Allen wearing number two and Graham Roberts in four and he's fouled immediately and I believe that that was a fair assumption he's going to play midfield although Mabbott has gone forward for this free kick from the back Ardiles takes it there he is again Waddle up against Jesper Olsen and he's beaten him and that was a firm cross Kevin Moran is there from Waddle corner taken quickly to Glenn Hoddle and here's Roberts and Turner saved it Allen oh goodness me the goalkeeper was let off the hook there Turner escaped because when Allen closed in he couldn't finish what Roberts had started Tottenham almost scored there in the first minute the cross came in from Hoddle watch Roberts the number four he got a header in Turner couldn't hold Allen hit the post Turner did well to get down to the ball because Clive Allen in fact obstructed him but it's unlike Allen not to get those sharp returns in it's a good job it wasn't 10 minutes into the game anyway it's a bright start for Tottenham and Waddle on the right hand side there was the instigator of that last attack Definitely in midfield, Graham Roberts, where he had a good spell earlier in the season. And he's gone through a testing week because the Glasgow Rangers transfer speculation still hasn't quite died down, in my opinion. Right side. Tony Galvin, socks roll down almost at once, his trademark, here's Hoddle, Ardiles, they've got room on the right hand side again for Chris Waddle, and Ardiles into Allen, I think what's happened there Laurie is David Fleet has told Chris Waddle to have a go at Duxbury early on on that flank. I think he's been given a completely free roll, John. Actually, and they are packing the midfield, and then anybody that can go away can give them width at any one time. Here's Moses. Robson.
sense of uh, anxiety in the Manchester United camp until they can get their game together and get a run going. They looked uneasy last week at Wimbledon when I saw them. But Alex Ferguson, rather like David Cleet at Tottenham, needs a bit of time to get his own ideas across. Peter Davenport there, who was fouled. Number 10 by Richard Goff, number 5. Is Duxbury to Olsen. He's got two to beat there, yes, for Olsen. And he needs help. Duxbury. Moses. Kevin Moran, number six. Well, there was no messing about there. Little call Allen on, yes, for Olsen. Possibly uh, <laughs> two of the lightest players on the pitch, but. Uh, He's being spoken to by David Hutchinson. Strachan for United, five minutes gone, Moses. It ricocheted off Glenn Hoddle, offside Davenport. of their team these days that's a flag on the far side the linesman spotting the offside but the linesman out there is Trevor Moore from Bradford Tottenham in the opening few minutes. Chris Waddles running down the right. Here's Hoddle again. Allen is in there, so is Roberts again. Here comes Gary Mabbott. The shot hit right side and was then skied over by Waddle. Yes, they look very good Tottenham at the moment when they're going forward. They've got so many good attacking players and Waddle looks very much on his game. Uh, this was a bit of a chance, a lot of defenders would have tried it, Graham Roberts said it's not my scene, he'll give it to someone else. That was a tremendous shot, this one, he just wrong-footed himself, but Manchester are very nervous at the moment. Yes, that is showing in this opening period, Tottenham are playing with far more assurance. There's less stress on them, this present time. Here's Brian Robson, the players who've come back, get to settle, but Strachan has found Robson now. Beck. and Robson forward again here and the foul is by Gary Mabbott well, they won't have Stapleton's head to aim at today but Moran and McGrath have both made their way forward that Norman Whiteside first burst upon the scene as a 17-year-old. Indeed, he was only 16 when he made his debut, but uh, he played up front in the uh, 82 World Cup, and he's back there today. That's Sieberbeck 
first header. Ozzy Ardila's got the touch. Mitchell Thomas, number three. Mabbott. Good touch by Clive Allen. Ardila's. Still it's Waddle on the right, running it when he can at Duxbury here. Duxbury got a foot in this time and gets the ball back from right side. Now he wants Olsen supporting down that side as well. Right side, Strachan. White side in space. Mabbott was so quick to close it down. But there was a gap at first. John Superbeck into Strachan from right side another free kick Glenn Hoddle in the tackle this time again the lineup on the far side right side Moran McGrath Right side's trotting in a bit now and going back again. Robson to Davenport, Olsen, it's going to come to Strachan, a chance, and a goal! Right side, right side got it. comes back as a striker and opens the scoring it was tucked in low in the end to Davenport Olsen let it run Strachan played it through White side ran in and Manchester United have taken the lead I would think Alec Ferguson is taking a lot of uh, joy out of this one because it's something which has obviously been worked out on the training grounds for a long time Manchester United won, Tottenham Hotspur nil, after Spurs, if anything, had had the best of the first ten minutes. Well, that's just the start that Manchester United were looking for, to settle them down after all the turbulent happenings around Old Trafford these last few weeks. And there he goes again. Play on, Tottenham had the advantage. Roberts. And here comes Hoddle, Paul McGrath. Waddle trying to make something of it. Moses. Davenport. Oh, Tony Galvin. Good effort. So, a near thing in the first minute at this end, and a goal for Manchester United at the other end after 12 minutes. Which is quite promising for the way the match might go because last season both the league meetings were goalless draws. Strachan, Robson,
So a quarter of an hour gone. Here's Moses for Manchester United. Davenport. Tottenham are giving away a series of free kicks on the edge of their area. That was Richard Goff. And it's putting Manchester United in a threatening position. And from one of them, the goal came. Whiteside, in fact, has got on the end of the last two free kicks. Strachan for Olsen. And in comes Moore, and the whistle's already gone. Flag was up on the far side. Many top teams, John, appear to just play free kicks off the cuff, you know, because they have so many talented players. It's obvious that Alec Ferguson's having none of that. The law was offside, it was a very well-worked free kick, and the goal came, of course, from a perfectly executed free kick. Mitchell Thomas now Whiteside not the best of passes Paul Allen cut it out got Chris Waddle to his right four the other way still Waddle away by Moore and Moore has made two or three good interceptions when the ball has come in past Duxbury tracks a bit there and there are plenty of players as Laurie McMenemy said in that midfield area and the collision there was Hoddle and Moses Here's Sieverbeck. And Glenn Hoddle's giving away some of these free kicks as well. On that occasion, uh, the referee said no foul, but uh, he's certainly getting in some tackles in there, Glenn. Not one of his uh, strengths, one some people would have you believe. But here's Paul McGrath. And now he's made a slip, and away goes Clive Allen. That's a good effort. Saved by Turner. Speculative, but very dangerous. Davenport. This has got the makings of a cracking game. Allen just took his chance to fire one in there and could well have curled it round a lesser goalkeeper. Model. Now Roberts. Mitchell Thomas. Ardiles in space. He got behind Strachan. They didn't go with him. And Duxbury's forced to cover. Ardiles got away there from Strachan. Well, Tottenham started on the attack and they've got to stay there now if they can. A goal behind. in there again well, Kevin Moore and decides to play his way out of difficulties interesting watching our dealers at his age he knows that he's got to conserve his energy but when he goes on a forward run it's usually a very telling one he seems to knit Tottenham's game together doesn't he when he's on the pitch they, they never quite managed to replace him when he's been out
shots off the head of Paul McGrath. 20 minutes gone and Spurs on the ground, but they haven't won in the league since 1976, are trailing by one goal to nil. But here's Mallet. And Whiteside seems to be relishing this uh, renewed role. Here's Strachan. And Robson, who found Duxbury. Olsen's on the wing. Four in the middle waiting. And a corner to United. Their first corner. McGrath forward. Strachan will take it. They're looking for a possible flick on. McGrath and Davenport in together with Robson. Might easily have been number two. McGrath won the near post header. Moses. Ran on to Strachan. And away by God. Duxbury. Good ball. Strachan onside. Olsen also onside. Mabbit away. Well, this is more like it for Manchester United. They're putting together a good sustained spell here. And Tottenham are being panicked into giving away free kick after free kick. That was Paul Allen. Second offence for Paul Allen. And that, in the mind of David Hutchinson, means a caution. That will be an accumulation of the two fouls that's earned him that booking, I'm sure. Olsen takes. Whiteside jumping there and forcing a corner. Halfway through the first half, and Manchester United looking as though they could capitalise on this one-goal lead. This time, uh, Hoddle got the header. Here's Olsen. Strachan. I love Tottenham, are very exciting to watch, John. I think over the years, if they've had one failing, they've had uh, a lack of too many hard, natural defenders. At the minute, you would say Graham Roberts and possibly Goffer in that category. But I think it shows when someone takes the full-backs on and consequently Paul Allen, who I don't think is a natural defender, got himself in a tangle and finished up in the book. Chris Hewton and Gary Stevens still on the top and injured list, incidentally, so... David Fleet hasn't got a full complement to choose from at the moment. But then neither is Alex Ferguson, and he might have a further casualty here in Paul McGrath. They're already without the likes of Colin Gibson, Manchester United, and now McGrath goes down. That near post corner, Laurie, uh, it's become something of a repetitious thing, but um, it does cause problems, doesn't it, even for the best uh, first division defenders? Well, it does, because you stick a tall player at the front, and all he has to do is just get a little touch, and of course, it alters the fight of the ball. The goalkeeper has got a chance, he's look, really. If he comes, he's jumping into a clutter of bodies. If he stays on his line, he's often got a little chance. But it was, uh, he was fortunate there, because Brian Robson appears to me to be getting far too much room on these corners. I think uh, Graham Roberts is supposed to be defending him, but he's standing about five yards off him, and you kind of give him that much room in the penalty area. Yes, that corner illustrated the very point you're making. Big McGrath there, who's currently being treated for an injury, flicked it on, and it was the second touch they wanted, but they were denied, actually, by the man coming off the line. Yeah, but the other point, Brian Robson arrived there, 
unescorted. I don't think David Peter would be too happy about that. Well, Manchester United have got McGrath back on his feet and Spurs will take the free kick. A bit of pushing and shoving going on there and it was spotted by the linesman and Laurie McMenemy and it's Goff having tangled Norman, is it? maybe Whiteside. Yes. A little bit of normal silly uh, pushing with the handbags out. Uh, it started like that but unfortunately there was an elbow went up which the linesman saw but the referee's been very sensible and just told him to quiet down. So eventually Ardiles will take the free kick for Spurs. McGrath, Goff, header by Galvin. McGrath hasn't shaken off the injury yet. Davenport. Those little one-touch balls from Ardiles, keeping Tottenham moving in midfield. Here's Roberts. He's found Waddle. Bit of a tangle on the far side. Here's Galvin, though. Galvin's very much the unsung hero amongst all the stars, but I've always thought he was a very good player. But he looks uh, out of form at the moment because he's been out for a long time with a cartilage and he's not playing in his normal wide position. I think this very flexible system David Pitt's using uh, has taken a lot of chances, certainly defensively, because he's virtually playing with one man up who happens to be Clive Allen. Still hobbling there, Paul McGrath. Oh, Chris Turner taking a long time to clear that ball. And uh, goalkeepers can be penalised, of course, for time wasting. There's our dealers. Well, Moses got in his way. Roberts got it back off Strachan, so here's our dealers again, and again Moses steps across him. Play on, says the referee, Manchester United have possession. Robson. And now Duxbury. Right-footed player playing on the left flank. In fact, both Colin Gibson and Arthur Orbiston have been on the injured list recently. And McGrath is clearly not going to be able to continue. This is going to be a reorganisation for Manchester United. Off he comes. And on goes Frank Stapleton, who has played centre-half before on more than one occasion in an emergency. And initially, with 17 minutes still left in the first half, that's just where he's gone, wearing the number 12 shirt. Robson. Duxbury. Olsen. And this time, Paul Allen is the victim of the tackle. I wondered, you know, whether Stapleton would go up front, dropping Whiteside into midfield, and seeing what a lot of people think might happen eventually Brian Robson going into the back four John but it hasn't happened yet uh, it's a twisted knee the uh, McGrath injury I gather um, this is the free kick for Tottenham with Goff having joined the attack here getting the header in there in front of Moran and Jesper Olsen wins it offside talking to uh, Clive Allen this morning he's a uh, good keeper of records he was talking about the 21 goals in 21 games that he's got in fact he's now been overtaken as the leading scorer in the four divisions because Richard Hill of Northampton went on to 22 on Friday night so uh, Clive needs one now to get level with him here's Davenport corner to Manchester United so they've now got Stapleton to join the throng there it was out 
strike off. Shevabek and Clyburn. Now we're talking uh, about goal scorers. It's Norman Whiteside whose 12th minute effort keeps Manchester United in front here. And I should add that uh, Ian Rush also has 21 this season, including the uh, one in the Charity Shield. And we've still got some way to go before Christmas, so they're making the pace among the opportunists. Here's Mitchell Thomas to Gary Mabbott. Brian Robson. games I would imagine to uh, get back to his peak there's Frank Stapleton in the center half position that Graham Roberts the offender he had a kick when the ball had gone and he didn't get away with it Roberts who was uh, sent off against Wimbledon not many weeks ago now receives another booking here's Moran and Cedarbeck back to score and he fails to take it Kevin Moran put clean through by Davenport only the goalkeeper to beat but a defender doesn't often find himself in this privileged position and he didn't quite apply the forwards finish but it was close yeah a typical defender they took it on a yard too far really he started this move off gave it to Davenport got it back he possibly should have had a go now well yard before that and he just missed, but what a great run and uh, a warning for Tottenham. They're not picking people up who are coming from the back. The BBC's first ever live league match three years ago between these two teams. Saw Manchester United win here 4-2 and Kevin Moran scored twice that night, so he must have felt then that he was on for an unusual sort of hat-trick, but he couldn't quite uh, finish it cleanly. Peter Davenport actually which uh, supplied that opening for Manchester United he's now hoping to get a flick on himself but it didn't arrive Stapleton Strachan Robson Strachan oh Olsen's in yards of space volleyed away by Goff when Robson was hoping the ball would come to him. Tottenham's right flank being exposed here. Right side. Well, the referee will have to sort that one out. <laughs> There's a few World Cup players around there. Richard Goff, Norman Whiteside, Oz, he's going to drop the ball, I think wasn't to Tottenham's liking, although Glenn Hoddle seems to have uh, found an outlet. Strachan there for Siva back. He got away from Galvin. 
in the middle, Davenport and Whiteside. Davenport, Robson's behind him, corner. Clements coming for it through a crowd of players and Ardiles once again smooth things down for Spurs but uh, Roberts certainly doesn't Duxbury, Strachan, right side flipping the ball about nicely now United Davenport and Mabbott oh they got caught again and it's there Peter Davenport has made it 2-0 and little well, Gary Mabbott de Crestfall and little Paul Allen I think was also involved in the error it was Mabbott who headed the ball out and what happened here was that Allen let Davenport come right in past him and he also got the ball past Clements from a very narrow angle and it's 2-0 to Manchester United and with 36 minutes gone Spurs I'm afraid have only themselves to blame Defensive sloppiness has cost them the second goal. But it's a morale booster for Davenport, a player who's not been thriving with the greatest of confidence recently, but that was well taken given the opportunity. skates on here they're in danger of letting this match run right away from them and it's on that right flank of the defense where the trouble really came yeah, they're in about Tottenham they've got to get a grip and uh, the system that they're working the packing the midfield a little bit like the stuff we saw in Mexico during the summer uh, very good when you've got the ball and when you've got good players in possession but they're chasing it now Manchester United have got much more possession they're sharper to the ball and there's not many in the Tottenham team taking responsibility they're looking for leadership really the captain is Ray Clements the goalkeeper this is Waddle getting a little bit aggravated Brian Robson in the thick of it with Ozzy Ardiles and the Tottenham players very angry about the challenge they want some action uh, somebody's gone too far here it's Ardiles well Tottenham are in a mess now they've gone two goals behind and they've had two of their midfield players booked in fact counting Paul Allen who was booked for the foul it's three bookings Ardiles There's Waddle. And still. And Turner let that one come back off the top of the bar. Goff's in there. And Turner's dropped it the second time and made two mistakes and neither one was punished. There's a lucky lad there because they were really under pressure and it's a good warning to Manchester United that they can't afford to relax. The opposition might not be playing as a team at the moment, but they've got enough talented individuals who can still turn the game on their own ability. Got forward for Tottenham, who desperately need to get something back before half-time if they can, but the way Manchester United have uh, set up this two-goal lead, they would kick themselves now if they let it slip. Graham Roberts. Tackle was by Moran. Hoddle. Offside plug was up anyway against uh, Clive Allen.
Here's Olsen. Here's Whiteside. Olsen. Mitchell Thomas. Clive Allen, offside. Well, the Manchester United supporters certainly pleased to see those goals go in because it's the first time since the 11th of October that United have scored more than once in a league match. Because when they beat Sheffield Wednesday here, they've only scored 17 in 17 league games before today, but they've got two to add to that total now. time we've seen a two-goal lead slip and it's happened uh, to United here at Old Trafford before now here's uh, Waddle three minutes left in the first half Frank Stapleton playing at centre-half there because uh, if you have joined the match late, Paul McGrath went off with a twisted knee. But it doesn't seem to have unsettled Manchester United. In fact, uh, Frank looks very comfortable back there. This is Galvin. Stapleton spreading the play to Jesper Olsen on that left wing. Now Dutchman. And Olsen would have been away again there. This is Davenport. Just wonder whether David Pleat might think about bringing on Danny Thomas in that right back position if things get much worse on that side of the field. He could reorganise. And I <laughs> there he is, in fact. This is Strachan, Olsen. Robson. Oh, God's mistake. More and no. Shh. Could so easily have been three. And again, Tottenham making a present of that opportunity. Tony Galvin. United are flying now. They all want to stop. But I think Tottenham are begging for the referee to blow. They could do with a good ten minutes and a good shot from David Pete to get them organised. This is Olsen. Here's Davenport. Strachan is backing him up. Davenport again. of the first half here at Old Trafford in this first division match Manchester United 2 Tottenham Hotspur nil a fair reflection of the way the game has gone Spurs started well but they've lost their way since and they're also on three bookings which uh, with a proliferation of bookings and sendings off this season, is always dangerous. In fact, uh, the game I saw yesterday at West Bromwich Albion, there were three sendings off. That's going to be a free kick. Here's Davenport. Duxbury. Oh, right side trying to get in behind Mabbott. Stockwich time at the end of the first half. Oh, 
Moses. Right side. And the whistle goes to the satisfaction of the Manchester United faithful. Right side in 12 minutes made it 1-0 and even after McGrath went off injured United capitalised on that lead and after 36 minutes they made it 2-0 and Gary Mabbott's header here wasn't actually the initial problem Allen hesitated Davenport came in and that was two well taken from that angle actually Ray Clements might want to look back on that and uh, have a few thoughts but uh, the fact of the matter is that at half-time, the score at Old Trafford is Manchester United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 0. Just to show that we are totally democratic, uh, although we're often accused of just concentrating on the top teams, uh, there's some FA Cup news this afternoon. There's a match down at Maidstone, one of the ambitious GM Vauxhall Conference Clubs, and the half-time score there is Maidstone 0, Cambridge United 0. Cambridge United themselves had a little run in the Middlewoods Cup and Tottenham beat them actually uh, not so long ago and uh, in the FA Cup this afternoon down there it's 0-0 at Maidstone and if you work with us at the beginning of the programme you might also like to know that uh, as the rain comes pouring down at Old Trafford that this morning Middlesbrough had a win at Notts County in the FA Cup second round so they will go into tomorrow's third round draw, which uh, we should all presumably be listening to on Radio 2 at half past 12, one of the definite dates on the football calendar, an exciting draw, which uh, will also involve, obviously, Manchester United and Tottenham Hotspur. And Ozzy Ardiles, who can look back on an FA Cup winner's medal when Spurs won that uh, memorable 100th final. Ben Hoddle played as well against Manchester City. The flavour of the FA Cup will soon be in the air again. We've got a live match on BBC on the weekend of the third round. But for the meantime, it's back to the serious business of points in the first division. And Manchester United here have the edge with a 2-0 cushion at half-time. Stapleton has lined up in the middle of the back four. And as yet, we've seen no sign of Danny Thomas coming on for Tottenham. Here's Glenn Hoddle. Ardiles. Olsen. Strachan. Sieverbeck's gone charging down the right wing. Davenport. Strangely enough, when Tottenham last won a league match here ten years ago, they were two down to Manchester United and came back to win 3-2. It was a match shown uh, on match of the day that night. So I suppose you could say that uh, history might just repeat itself, but uh, they'll have an awful lot to do. Here's Ardiles. Allen for Spurs. Galvin. Hoddles there with the flick and Duxbury with the clearance. Right side tangling with Paul Allen. That was Goff. This is Thomas. Mitchell Thomas, that is. Galvin. Frustrating sort of player, Chris Waddle. He can delight you with these mazy dribbles and then he can disappoint you. He's frustrating, I would think, to play with and to manage, but uh, you persevere with people like him because I think that the crowd, by and large, want to see good attacking players and especially when they, they give you width as well and take the full back on. He's an England international and I'm sure that over the whole season that he pays his manager his faith in him back. Davenport. Abbott's 
transition agent. Here's Huddle. Push up. Free kick to Spurs. Richard Groff has made his way forward. Here's Waddle. He can come right again to Paul Allen. And still, Ardiles. Right side's challenge, Waddle. But what a mistake here, Stapleton and Siva back in a bit of a mess. Perhaps there wasn't a shout from someone there, that appeared to be confusion. Anyway, Siva Beck's able to bring the ball away now, and that's his rather stronger quality. Here's Strachan, and they're trying to stay on side, and Graham Roberts slipped there, and lucky to get the flag. Olsen's offside, actually, but Roberts actually slipped. And had the flag not gone up, he would have been in no position to get back and challenge. Certainly not um, providing much in the way of cohesion up front. Ferguson got a victory in his first home game here against Queen's Park Rangers, so three points today would mean he'd made a solid start at Old Trafford. Flags up again here. If you get the biggest crowds in the league, you've also got to live with the fact that they're entitled to be the most demanding. for Tottenham. Now, Sieverbeck drove that in the direction of Olsen. And overcame a beleaguered Paul Allen. And a free kick it is. That came out of the Denmark World Cup manual, I suppose. That uh, cross-field ball. Anyway, here's Olsen again. Davenport coming in here, and Clements just got a hand to it. The skillful players, the two uh, Danish players, and uh, Olsen hasn't been in the game too much, but whenever he's been in, he's usually causing a little bit of panic in the top of defence. Well, he's preparing now to take this corner. And Robson's up there. Moses. Spin Graham Roberts. In fact, uh, the handshake signifies a free kick to Manchester United. To which uh, Stapleton and Moran have both gone forward. Richard Goff with the header. Stapleton. And the corner again as Manchester United turn the screw on Tottenham. Oh, Frank's playing his centre-half, he just took that opportunity to remind Alec that he is a forward and he can do a little bit of magic around about the penalty area there. It's played short to Whiteside, back again to Olsen. And Tottenham can't for the moment get out of their own half. Olsen again. Clive, it's 
cousin. Kevin Moran gently on to Frank Stapleton. Moses, Robson, away from Galvin. The scene switches to the right for Manchester United, and Moses is covering a lot of ground in there. Here's Olsen. Moses again. Oh, he got taken by uh, Tony Galvin. So Tottenham are going to suffer their fourth booking of the afternoon. That's not particularly in the Tottenham tradition, that, but there's no question about the trip. Lazy tackle, this, from a tired player. Been out a long, long time for the cartilage, and it sums up his frustration on the afternoon. Here's Strachan. I've lost count of the number of free kicks Spurs have conceded. They really are bringing a wave of red shirts down on themselves here by conceding the ground. Stapleton's forward again. Here comes Duxbury. He's got time to join the attack as well, but Strachan will have to hurry. some midfield players forward somehow Tottenham ahead of the ball to find some sort of foothold in the match here's Hoddle be a substitution any second Roger Ardiles hasn't completed the 90 minutes very often and uh, he'll be the man to come off not this season he hasn't anyway this is Davenport Beautifully played by Davenport. The ball to Strachan was right, but he was just marginally offside. Davenport has put two delicious through balls into the path of first Moran and then Strachan in this match. Substitution. Ozzy Ardiles off, Danny Thomas on, and I would imagine that could mean a change of role for Paul Allen, because Danny Thomas would normally operate at right back, but we'll have to wait and see. Here's Waddle. Still Waddle. That's gone. Corner. Tottenham need to get something off the set piece, I think, John, because their approach play isn't getting them as far as the penalty area at the moment. Well, they've got uh, Mabbott, Goff and Roberts all positioned on the far side of the area here. Mabbott! That is a terrific goal, and this player, he's all-purpose. A brilliant header by the England international Gary Mabbott. Probably more spectacular than the one he got against Yugoslavia. What a powerful effort that was. 57 minutes gone, nobody picked him up, but my word, that was an inspirational goal for Tottenham. I doubt whether the goalkeeper saw it, and Spurs are back in business. You think the manager can take credit for that substitution, John? Change it again. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it's, it's turned things around a bit here because it's come at a time when Tottenham badly needed something, and as you said, it was a set piece that brought it. David Pleat there has reorganised. Danny Thomas is playing at right back, and Paul Allen has gone into the right hand midfield berth. This is Strachan. Just a word about Gary Mabbott, Laurie. In, a, in an era when they talk about players having to be versatile, he seems to be able to play just about anywhere and do very nearly anything. 
Yes, and he's a very popular lad. He's a, he seems to be a very nice character. He's a diabetic, and uh, he's an uh, inspiration to any youngster in the same situation that he can overcome that problem and still be a top-class footballer. Also been suffering from a bad cough and cold this week, Gary Mallett, but uh, a very big breakfast this morning at the Tottenham Hotel seemed to help him to shake that off. He's quite an eater too. Here's Hoddle eating up the ground for Tottenham. Good effort, oh. and turn of flat, and an own oh. goal, Kevin Moran. Spurs are level, and Glenn Hoddle created this. He tried to chip the keeper, turn a flat, and watch Kevin Moran here. That has to go down as an own goal. It's 2-2. Hoddle, who saw the possibility, forced Turner to make an awkward-looking save. The ball came back behind him. Kevin Moran could have got it out, and he put it in. 59 minutes gone. It's 2-2. And once again, a two-goal lead disappears. How often that seems to happen in football when a side goes two goals up early? Chris Turner is an excellent goalkeeper, John, but if there's ever been a criticism of him, it's on that sort of chip. His lack of inches sometimes let him down, and I think in that occasion, uh, he could have positioned himself a little better. Well, what a different game we've got here now. Two goals in two minutes by Tottenham. Mabbott after 57, an own goal by Moran after 59. And I suppose memories are revived of that match here ten years ago when Spurs finally won 3-2. Here's Strachan, though, for Manchester United, Davenport. This is Hoddle. And Clive Allen. Well, Spurs have found some inspiration now. Second goal was a gift, but Glenn Hoddle would take credit, obviously, for testing Turner the way he did. Here's Strachan. They found inspiration, John, but they've also changed their tactics in their system. Uh, Chris Waddle has been stuck up front alongside Clive Allen, and at every opportunity, the two of them are running wide and pulling the centre half around. And we remember that Frank Staple is not experienced there. It's given Manchester United the problem that they didn't have before. And Robson having to get back to Shepherd, the ball away from Paul Allen. Oh, well turned on by White side to Olsen. Davenport in the middle, waiting for a cross. So is Strachan. And it's been cut out. And who else? But Mabbott again. Moving people forward, also leaves spaces behind. And Manchester are trying to find Olsen, who is just taking his time and hugging the touchline in the hopes that he'll get breaks as that one there proved, nearly proved very decisive for them. Well, Whiteside and Stapleton have positioned themselves in the near post vicinity. And Stapleton's was the flick on. And Clement's in trouble, Davenport, no! Referee was on the spot, he's given a foul. No goal. Well, this is now one of the most eventful matches we've had. The corner was dangerously swung into the near post again. And uh, as Ray Clements went for that, there's an arm up there. The goalkeeper appears to be impeded, and Danforth's effort is not counting. Clive Allen for Spurs. And a lovely ball to Waddle. Well, down the years, it's always been said, and rightly, that Spurs-Manchester United matches, put it which way round you like, have thrown up some fine occasions, some splendid football, and intense excitement. We've got that here now.
Strachan. Oh, well played by Paul Allen. He looks better in that midfield position. Here's Roberts. Hoddle. Roberts goes again. Lovely ball by Hoddle. That's through with the block. And Jesper Olsen quick enough to come away. It could go either way now. So unpredictable and so enjoyable. Robson. Danny Thomas. Paul Allen. Robson again. It's a real flow to the match now. Sieverbeck. Davenport. Free kick. Davenport was obstructed. And Manchester United, having conceded a two-goal lead, now look for a way to get back in front. Robson's moved away. Strachan to take. Moses. Good effort. Yes, Clement saw it all the way. him off he's got Paul Allen outside him to the other way still Danny Thomas Galvin Paul Allen Clive Allen coming near post oh Strachan was knocked over there off the ball <laughs> Referee had a quick look round. The official crowd figure, incidentally, is just under 36,000. And they're enjoying themselves. Spurs on the attack again. And that was Sieverbeck on Waddle. Well, you can't say that Tottenham have gone on the defensive at all, John. They're pushing forward, and Glenn Hoddle has come more into his own since Avilez has gone off. He's realised he's got to take responsibility around that midfield, and that was an excellent pass from the centre circle right over the corner flag, which has earned him a corner. But ben Hoddle's going to take it. Kevin Moran, Paul Allen, Galvin, well played by Whiteside, looking up to see two ahead of him. Always remember. Back in my local reporting days, uh, the Barnet manager of that time, great character called Dexter Adams, once said to me, 2-0 is the worst lead to have in football if you go two up too early in the game. It happened to Argentina in the World Cup final, and it's happened to Manchester United here today. We're back at 2-2, and that old adage proves true yet again. I'll settle for that next Saturday, John. Well, it's certainly... A match which the uh, Manchester United Tottenham tradition will be quite pleased to add to the list. <laughs> Remy Moses being spoken to, although all the bookings actually uh, have gone to Tottenham players. Four have been cautioned, without it being, I have to say, an ugly game in any sense. is coming in from the far side in fact he came in well but it rebounded to Olsen and now Manchester United could have a break on it was right side who found Olsen there were three the other way against three if he plays the right ball it's on here Davenport no it was right side in the middle who was really screaming for it and Strachan out to the right Halfway through the second half, Manchester United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 2. Hoddle for Spurs.
Waddle tries to reach the line. Certainly a more exciting and invigorating game for the spectators, Laurie, than the Merseyside derby a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, to be fair, I think the weather spoiled that one, John. Uh, this has been an excellent game for everyone concerned. Credit to both teams and both managers for allowing it to flow and uh, keep attacking, which hence the four goals. Yes, it was certainly a strong wind at Goodison that day. And the wind for the moment here, figuratively anyway, is with Spurs. This is uh, Paul Allen, Danny Thomas. Well, that uh, talking point a few minutes ago, when there was a, uh, a, an effort disallowed, I won't call it a goal, because it wasn't. Clements appeared to be bundled there, and I think David Hutchinson was in a very good position to make that decision. Here's Olsen. Roberts. This is uh, Mitchell Thomas. He's got Bar Strachan. He's got Galvin going outside him. And Sieverbeck read what was going to happen there. Well, where's your money now, Laurie? It's in my pocket, John. It's staying there. <laughs> um, no, it, to say it could go either way, uh, I think that I can't see Manchester United losing. But uh, at half time, I couldn't really see Tottenham getting back into the game. But credit to them. Uh, with so many attacking players on the field. They had to go forward, and that's what they've done. Here's Moses. Touched by Whiteside. This is Robson. Blocked by Mabbott. In by Duxbury to Moses. And Glenn Hoddle comes away with three players ahead of him. One of them is Galvin here. Waddle's gone on the left wing. And uh, Clive Allen's in the middle on this side. Galvin. Warren's header out. It's a corner. They're appealing for hands over there, or Waddle was, but a uh, corner's been given. That's Tony Galvin's strength. When he's fully fit, he gets to that bar line, and nine, well, usually ten times out of ten, he can rely on him getting a good cross in. He's an unsung hero, I reckon, of that team. Well, Hoddle's going to take the corner. Abbott was up again, Stapleton got the header away. Outside against Galvin. Be interesting to know what Alec Ferguson thinks about the English First Division after playing at Wimbledon last week with their distinctive style, coming up against Tottenham with uh, so many good international players in it. I don't suppose there was such a variation in systems from one week to the other where he's just come from in Scotland. He was really like a schoolboy approaching this match, Laurie, in his enthusiasm. He wanted to see what it was like, what he called one of the glamour occasions, Manchester United Tottenham. And uh, I don't know quite how his heart's beating at the moment, but it's certainly been eventful. This is Mitchell Thomas to Chris Waddle. What he certainly won't want to see is United concede another goal. Mitchell Thomas is coming more into the game in an attacking sense now. Getting down that left-hand side. Waddle. It's too long for Paul Allen. Dixbury was the player who conceded the corner. Pick Mabbard up this time, John. Waddle. Oh, and Allen went in. It's a goal. Well, Waddle curled it in. Allen made absolutely sure it went in the net. But I just want to see that one again as to how close to the line he was. Waddle curved it in, and Allen went in. Whether he'll claim that, strikers usually do from there. 
and Clive Allen closed in here and I've got a feeling Clive will say that's his 22nd of the season. If you got kicked in the head, you'd want to claim it yes, as well. Yes, you, <laughs> you certainly would. 73 minutes that's gone. That's where a striker's on the corner when the boot is literally flying towards your face and you put your head there and you claim the goal. Uh, I'm sorry, but Mr Turner's got to have another look at his position and uh, possibly that corner was taken too quickly for Manchester United who were possibly looking to see who was picking Mabbitt up as a result of the last corner. They took a short one and they whipped it over before they were ready for it. Well, it's a very quiet bench down there and uh, there'll be some differing emotions on that bench because Tottenham, from 2-0 behind, have now gone 3-2 up. It was a slack piece of defending in the first place when the corner was conceded. They let Waddle get the cross in. The goalkeeper is struggling hopelessly and there's Clive Allen, the poacher extreme. Chris Turner crestfallen. And if you look at that picture there, John, as the ball went in the net, there was seven Manchester United players and one Tottenham player and he got the ball into the back of the net. Three goals in 16 minutes and I know some people feel we stretch the arm of coincidence a bit far sometimes and we refer back to matches in the past. But how strange that when Spurs last won here in the league, ten years ago, exactly this happened. That's Allens, no question. They were 2-0 down that day and won 3-2. They were 2-0 down today and they lead 3-2. Fifteen minutes to go. And Manchester United wondering exactly what's hit them. Defensive errors, that's for sure. But uh, we're not complaining among the neutrals that we've seen five goals. Strachan, Sieverbeck, right across for Olsen, Robson's in the penalty area here, and Robson might have preferred it on his left foot, but uh, and again, it might have been 3-3. Well, it's not over yet, John, and this proves that there's still plenty of life left. There's Olsen, who's just lying out there handy for things like that to happen, and one would normally expect Brown to get that on target but it was certainly would have been on his other foot. But uh, they're living dangerously a little bit Tottenham. And interesting that they haven't pulled Chris Waddle back. They've stayed with the two men up, and uh, that's plenty of confidence in the side for you. And uh, what a difference in Paul Allen since he's gone forward. Yes, that was in many ways a turning point, although Danny Thomas hadn't been on the pitch more than a few seconds when Spurs got that uh, earlier goal. Nevertheless, the game has changed completely since uh, David Pleat made the switch. Here's Mitchell Thomas to Hoddle. Galvin. Hoddle in the way. Manchester United could break here, they've got Strachan on the ball, three the other way from him. And Danny Thomas, well played. Right side. Well, this is exactly what you want when you're watching your football live. A game that could still go anybody's way, really, although Spurs now must fancy themselves having come from two behind. But it could well go right to the last few seconds. Here's Strachan. White side's coming in for the header. It's too long for him. Olsen. And that's going to find Strachan again. Sieverbeck's moving up. Moses. That's great. Olsen. And Olsen again. The 
Well, David Pleat's been very clever, I think. He's certainly exploited the fact that Frank Stapleton is an emergency centre-half. It would suit the centre-forward back there just to have someone to mark. He has taken a target man away, and at Frank Stapleton will find it very difficult to mark players who are continually on the move. And that's what Tottenham have been doing uh, in the second half. Oh, mistake. Stapleton and Moran. This is Clive Allen. Good save this time by Turner. Clive Allen still carrying the sponge to mop up the blood from the wound he sustained in scoring the third Tottenham goal. But Stapleton's square pass there to Moran went astray. Moran's to Whiteside didn't. Strachan is through the centre. And here's Olsen. Well played by Chris Waddle, but he's being asked to do an awful lot there for the return, and he's made it from Paul Allen. Clive Allen in the middle. Hoddle. Only to Strachan, though. Now Manchester United have got to get players out of their own half into more advanced positions. The trend of the match is completely reversed. Here's Olsen. Strachan to right side. Robson's on a run here. Mitchell Thomas jockeying him. That's a throw in. There are 10 minutes to go at Old Trafford. Spurs lead 3 2. Duxbury for United to right side. Davenport. Only as far as Sieberbeck from Hoddle. Nicely done by Gordon Strachan, who played under Alex Ferguson at Aberdeen. That's the battered hero of Tottenham. to see all the short hair cuts around John, isn't it? Both managers, actually, Laurie, have, uh, I think it's fair to say, tightened up the discipline a little bit at these two clubs. There's a change in match day routine for both the Spurs and the Manchester United players under David Pleas and Alex Ferguson. So, uh, maybe the alterations in that area are going to have some effect. We shall see. thought they'd notice your haircut, John, and realise that was the trend, and they're coming up to date alongside you. Actually, when I was talking about discipline, I really meant to say that the routine on the day of a match uh, has altered, uh, in the case of, uh, of both clubs. Offside. Against Davenport. Still having quite a battle there with Moses. This is Roberts. Well, there are eight minutes to go. It's Manchester United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 3. When at half time, it was Manchester United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 0. Of course, if we're going to uh, refer back to the classic matches in the past between these two teams, you've probably seen that old black and white Bobby Charlton goal on television that was scored here in the Charity Shield. Got a feeling that match ended 3-3. And uh, might have been the game when Pat Jennings scored a goal, although uh, doubtless the Tottenham fans will correct me on that if I'm wrong. Here's Remy Moses. Those were the days of Law, Charlton and Best. Dave Mackay, Jimmy Greaves. Here now we have Norman Whiteside. Brian Robson closing in. And also the days of the uh, Spurs double winning team prior to that, in which uh, 
Clive Allen's father, Les, was a member before Jimmy Greaves took his place. And Clive now with 22 goals in 22 first-team appearances this season. You couldn't ask for a tidier strike rate than that, could you? Gary Mabbott's injured. And John Sheridan, the uh, Tottenham physiotherapist there, who came from Luton with David Pleat. I think an interesting blend David might have found in midfield since our dealers went off. Roberts giving Hoddle the comfort of his strength and defence, sitting in behind him and allowed Glenn Hoddle to take tremendous responsibility from the halfway line forward. Kevin Warren, whose own goal really changed the course of the match. Although they were 2-1 ahead at the time, that was the goal that put Tottenham back on terms, and they quickly made the most of that. And Warren had the misfortune to miss a first-half chance that uh, might have even seen Manchester United go in three up at the break. Anyway, here he is again. This is Roberts. Spurs were beaten 3-2 by Nottingham Forest at home last weekend. They now lead 3-2. With five minutes to go. Waddle offside. Exciting uh, cup tie for Dundee United. That's his pass. Looking for Paul Allen. Now, can Manchester United still yet salvage something from this quite extraordinary match, which they seem to have so much under their control at half time? The rain is still sheeting down. Receiver back to Moses. Robson. And Whiteside and Robson, but it won't go through. And Brian Robson has gone down. And picks himself up, starts to make his way slowly back. And away goes Chris Waddle. Graham Roberts is well forward in the centre here, so too is Clive Allen. This is Hoddle. I think he just fancied the, to chip the goalkeeper there. Turner was just a yard or two out of his ground. And Hoddle's already half done that to some effect, which led to the own goal. Here's Strachan. Oh, and here's Robson. Penalty, is it? Brian Robson brought down by Danny Thomas. And just waiting for the confirmation, but it looks like a penalty to me. Robson here was in a good position, and he was checked, Laurie. Yes, definite penalty. Uh, Brian Robson must be very tired, he's been out injured for a while, but his nature is to continue to battle on and get into that penalty area. And he got in there and the defender never went for the ball, he stumbled into him and the referee never hesitated. So, the responsibility falls to Peter Davenport. With two minutes to go.
was so, so unlucky. Davenport struck it well, but the Tottenham goalkeeper went the right way. Just see how near he was to pulling off a save. He got both hands to it, but couldn't keep it out. The power took it in. And Manchester United are back level again with just about a minute to go. 3-3. And is there more to come? This is Strachan. And he's gone down, but uh, Mitchell Thomas won the ball. Brian Robson, who's run, earned that penalty for Manchester United. Beck. Strachan and still and Goff over his own crossbar the last minute well what classic entertainment Jesper Olsen will take the corner White side closer to him Stapleton's there as well so is Moran and so is Hoddle. Well, if they play like this, then the crowds will come back to football. It's a match that's kept us on the edge of our seats from the moment Clive Allen hit the post in the first minute to the moment Davenport put that penalty in in the 89th. 3-3. Sieverbeck. We're going into stoppage time now. It's a match, I think, as well, which has made Peter Davenport a lot more popular with the supporters. He's had a good game, and that took a lot of nerve to take that penalty at this stage of the game. And Kevin Moran will be a relieved man, I would think, at this moment. Here's Moses. Down the years, very few clubs have provided better entertainment when they've met than Spurs and Manchester United. And this match goes down in that particular hall of memories. Manchester United led 2-0 at half-time with goals by Whiteside and Davenport. Then in the second half, Spurs scored twice in the space of two minutes. Gary Mabbott with a thundering header which really turned the game and an own goal by Kevin Moran. 73 minutes, Clive Allen made it 3-2 to Tottenham and then with a minute to go for the foul on Brian Robson, a penalty to Manchester United, and Davenport made it 3-3. Well, if football's going to be like that, then let's have a lot more of it. And thank goodness a large audience has seen what can be served up in the way of genuine entertainment. The match well contested, well refereed, and certainly for those of us that were here, and I hope for those of you at home too, a very memorable one indeed. Well, what a game it was. Now, say no more, except give you the chance to savour a bit of that magic once again. <laughs> Robson to Davenport, Olsen, it's going to come to Strachan. A chance, and a goal! Right side. Right side got it. Duxbury, Strachan, right side, tipping the ball about nicely now, United. Davenport. Mabbott. Oh, they've got caught again, and it's there. Hey, Mabbott. Yeah! That is a terrific goal, and this player, he's all purpose. A brilliant header by the England international Gary Mabbott. Probably more spectacular than the one he got against Yugoslavia. What a powerful effort that was. Here's Hoddle eating up the ground for Tottenham. Good effort, oh. and Turner flat, and an own goal, Kevin Moran. Spurs are level, and Glenn Hoddle created this. He tried to chip the keeper, Turner flat, and watch Kevin Moran here. That has to go down as an own goal. Waddle. Oh, and Allen went in. It's a goal. Here's Strachan. 
Oh, and here's Robson. Penalty, is it? Brian Robson brought down by Danny Thomas. Clements was so, so unlucky. Well, I hope I've got the breath left to remind you of the sport that's on BBC television in the coming week. On Familiar sight in British football, yet another league championship for Liverpool. Today in the big match live, Kenny Dalglish's men are on course to take the title for the ninth time in 12 years. They lead the today league by six points with just nine games to play, and a win over seventh place Tottenham this afternoon would surely kill off the chasing pack. Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome to my guest this afternoon, a man who played a vital part in Liverpool teams of the 1970s when they were one of the most outstanding teams in Europe. And Newcastle at the moment looking just a little disorganised. Here's Hall. And now a chance for Keegan! And that's it! Kevin Keegan! Smith. Keegan going in! Turned inside the highway, playing it again for Smith. What a good move! Oh, and yes, it's there by Keegan! <laughs> Kevin Keegan, nice to see you in action again. Nice to see the old signboards, isn't it? Uh, they're there forever. I've got rid of them now, though. Yeah. Now, Kev, you and I have played in some epic battles here against Tottenham over the years. Today is a crucial one for both sides. Yeah, as you said, it's, it's a great ground to come and play football in. The pitch is in fantastic condition. You'd think it was just pre-season games on it. And uh, I suppose when we used to play against, we, to be fair, the great Spurs team had gone and they were going through a transitional period. Now they're building up to be one of the great signs again, and so it's slightly different that way. We used to come here expecting to win. Now it's a little bit different, a little bit tougher. Well, one man who will certainly be hoping that he can get Liverpool in the winning vein today is Ian Rush. Uh, having an outstanding season again. We'll be sadly missed, of course, when he goes. Uh, but a key He's figure, great. obviously, today. He's a great player. I mean, what can you say about Ian Rush? hasn't been said. He just keeps on doing what he's best at and we see this action here this is this probably is a typical rushy goal Malby it's a great ball over the top he can give anybody five yards uh -huh. and I mean in goalkeepers <laughs> <laughs> the goalkeeper may have, come, may have think, come too far there yeah but his pace is frightening and that's the one thing that scares defenders his pace it, it, that sort of electrifying pace you just can't counter for it's, it's abnormal so we've got rush at one end at the other end Mark Lawrenson having an outstanding season now you've played against him a few times I think Mark Lawrence, more than anybody, decided for me that it was about time to finish. He, I knocked <laughs> yeah. the ball past him once. His pace is, again, frightening. And for a defender to have such pace, is, it's wrong, really, isn't it? You know, they use big guys, they're not supposed to be this quick. Uh -huh. And you imagine how tough it is to get through a Liverpool defence. And you finally get something like half a chance, you've got this guy breathing down your neck, just clearing up. But he Brilliant wink, he winkles the ball out so cleanly as well when he slides in there, doesn't he? Yeah, because he can, he, he can buy time with his pace in and his, his reading of the game. He's probably one of the best readers of the game since, yeah. since Bobby Moore in yeah. British football, I think. OK. Uh, Waddle, you play with Chris Waddle at Newcastle. And he's beginning to settle a bit here now, Kevin. I think for the first time, Ian, he's, he's playing the sort of football that he played for us at Newcastle. Like, he's taken him a little while to find his first division legs. Uh -huh. uh, people expected so much. But you see this goal against Wimbledon. When he gets one against one like this, it, I don't think he realises the talent he's got. And he's two-footed, as you'll see here. Great right foot finish. It, you know, he, he, he's not bothered going right and left. So you've got a player who can take you on, yes. got pace, and can go either way. And that frightens defenders too. So, I mean, we, we've got a really exciting game lined up this afternoon. Oh, I think everything. If, it, but if it's 50% as good as what we think it's going to be, yeah. it'll be a classic. Smashing. Now, Spurs' success, of course, in the, in the past month or two, has led to David Pleat winning the Bell Swiss Gate Manager of the Month for February. And uh, he got his award uh, this afternoon. Nice to see David. The one thing about him, I would say, Kevin, that you know, he wants to play football with Tottenham and he's always encouraged him to play. Yeah, it, this is a great club for him because Tottenham have always wanted to play football and he's a manager who wants to see it played. And uh, it's great to see him getting this award. 
OK, well, joining us uh, this afternoon for the first time uh, in our commentary box is Watford's Graham Taylor, who will be running the rollover spurs before the FA Cup semi-final. But first, our commentator, Brian Moore. Thank you, Ian, and uh, welcome to Graham, of course. Let's make our first job uh, picking up on the two sides. Spurs, in fact, field the side that started in the Cup at Wimbledon last Sunday with Ray Clements in goal. In the back four, Gary Stevens has had a problem this week with a hamstring. He only started training again on Friday. As usual, five men waiting to pounce from the midfield, as Chris Waddle and Glenn Hoddle did, of course, against Wimbledon last Sunday. And then up front, as usual, that lone man, Clive Allen. Liverpool, meantime, with that splendid character, Bruce Grobelar in goal. Gary Gillespie returns to their back four after injury. He'll be a central defender, no doubt, with Alan Hansen, but it's speculation whether Ronnie Whelan continues at left back or indeed goes to the midfield where, for the sake of this caption, we put Mark Lawrenson. Whelan and Lawrenson could well swap places, and I can tell you for sure that Kenny Dalgleish is not telling anybody other than his players at the moment. And then up front, Paul Walsh and Ian Rush. Referee today, John Martin from Hampshire. Quick word from Graham Taylor. Graham, how do you uh, see this one going? Well, all the makings of a very good game, of course, Brian. Uh, it's going to be interesting as to see whether Liverpool will push on for the game. I mean, Tottenham have to do that. And if, if Tottenham get their game going and force Liverpool to play as we know they can play, then it's, it really is uh, going to be an exciting time for everybody. And for you, an important afternoon looking at your semi-final opponents in a fortnight's time, Spurs. Well, yes, it's a, it's a good opportunity for, for me to come and have a look at Tottenham. But as we all know, that's uh, a month away and we'll have to look at that and take it as it comes. What a great reception for Ray Clements at the other end there. The Liverpool fans behind that goal, remembering a man who in fact won five championship medals with the Anfield club. Well, Spurs then in the white shirts will be kicking off and attacking the goal to our right. In its way, such a crucial afternoon in the race for the First Division Championship. If Spurs could win it, then all sorts of things might open up. If Liverpool win it, a lot of people feel that they could be over the hill and far away. And their lead would go to nine points. So it's a Liverpool throw, which Barry Benison will take. Unbeaten in their last nine games, Liverpool. Although Spurs will remember with some comfort that they won at Anfield earlier this season with a Clive Allen goal. And as you'd expect, a fantastic support that Liverpool have brought down with them from Merseyside. Mitchell Thomas then is Clive Allen. Mitchell Thomas with the throw. A little touch by Hoddle for Ardiles. Here's Gary Stevens. Chris Waddle. Allen. Foul on him. Free kick to Tottenham. Well, Clive Allen already with 40 goals to his credit. This season will be one of the targets that Spurs will be aiming for here. It's Chris Waddle at the moment. Hodge on the far side, but it was Gillespie with his six foot two frame getting in there with a header. Here's Mitchell Thomas. And away come Liverpool with Craig Johnston. Talk about how hard goals are to come by these days with Clive Allen 40 and Ian Rush 34. 74 between the two of them this season. Ardiles, Allen, here's Gillespie. And now Allen Hansen. And Kenny Dalgleish, who's done so much since he became player manager. Sitting this one out, he's not even the sub today. John Aldridge is the Liverpool sub, and that's the Kenny Dalglish view of the game. Not the best, you'll agree. Harry Benison right in front of him now, though. Played on by Walsh, Johnston, and a swift challenge coming in from our dealers.
Johnston. Benison playing it high. Test here for the Tottenham defence. Whelan is in there. Rush also. Made a fall loose with a bit of freedom ahead of him for Chris Waddle. Fouled by Whelan. Lively start, Graham. Yes. Um, I think both teams, it, like every, every game, it, it takes a time to, to find a pattern and. Uh, Little skirmishes to start with, uh, but no real pattern established uh, yet. But Mark Lawrenson playing at left back, and Ronnie Whelan having forsaken the left back position he's played in recent weeks. Ronnie Whelan, the number five, now in midfield. So Whelan now takes up. In fact, he's been playing very well at left back, hasn't he? Whelan's done extremely well. I think um, all of the crew players, of course, are good players, and they slot in. And, and meet the demands of the team. Lesby, Whelan again. Here's Hodge. Waddle. We had an exceptional game up at Anfield when uh, Spurs won up there. Waddle. Dispossessed, though, by Spackman. who really makes the others play, as David Pleat was saying, is the Argentinian Argentinian, Ozzy Ardiles, 34 years old. Spackman looked to be getting into trouble, the former Chelsea man, but got himself out of it and found that Barry Venison was available. There's a long run from Venison again. Here's Barry Stevens for Spurs. Hoddle. Ball out of play and a Tottenham throw. He was unburdened by Paul Walsh, who has glided past Richard Goff and then uh, was fouled by Ozzy Ardiles, who came back at him. Such a fine passing side, Liverpool, and Walsh is one of the few players in the side who, it appears, loves to take people on. And Mulby behind this free kick. Magnificent striker of a dead ball. Flicking that with the outside of his boot towards Spackman and Mabbott getting it away for Tottenham. Benison. Johnston. Paul Allen. Little touch now for Hodge. Johnston again. Off the last line for Tottenham. And the header is a poor one. And it's Lawrence and all people picking it up there. Walsh trying to get in and just wide. No kick. Started uh, Graham Taylor with uh, Lawrenson popping up on a right side of midfield position. Yeah, I think he, he got up there for the uh, free kick and they never really uh, have got away from that since that time. What interested me all of the time was not only Walsh getting in, but to see that other man rush to see where he was lurking. All of the time looking and seeking out opportunities that sooner or later he knows one will fall his way. Whelan's header, hold his touch, Lawrenson. Finding Venison on the far side. Oh, oh! And Craig Johnston with a little touch. And a lovely little touch by Walsh. Played in by Spackman now towards Mulby. A little from Machine getting into gear as Craig Johnston puts it in towards Ronnie Whelan. And it'll be a throw to Tottenham, which Chris Waddle will take. To prove me wrong, Gary Stevens will take. Waddles, 
header. Now on Paul Allen. You're telling me earlier that this man, Paul Allen, you thought might be a key man for Spurs today, Graham. Yes, he has tremendous pace, Paul, and I think that if he can come from midfield and just get a, a, a well-timed run, then he could actually uh, be the person that might unlock the, uh, the Liverpool defence. Well, if he can make chances for his cousin, Spurs will be delighted. Five on. Yeah, here is Paul Allen. Cut out easily by Rush. Now, that's the other side of Rush, the amount of work that he does, getting back there, stopping that Spurs movement, Goff playing it forward again. Here's Gillespie. I think what is in, going to be important, uh, Brian, is the two wide midfield players of Liverpool, Johnson and Whelan, because obviously Spurs do pack the midfield and there's going to be a lot of work demanded of Johnson and Whelan, uh, and they're, they're up to that, but I think it's going to be an important role that they play today. Mitchell Thomas versus Craig Johnston. Paul Walsh. Falls for Allen. Half a waddle. Here's Hoddle. Harry Stevens going outside him, you can see that. Touched by Hodge, finding Paul Allen. Spurs putting a movement together here now. Mitchell Thomas. And then uh, a poor ball there, cut out by Venison. Mabbott turning it back, and here's Craig Johnston. Oh, and a nice ball if Walsh can just get there. Good, strong challenge by Mabbott, and a very important one indeed for Tottenham. Waddle. Gillespie. Adidas. Goff. Clements. Five Allen up, but Hansen's header for Liverpool, helped on by Ronnie Whelan. Stevens. Ten minutes of the first half gone in this important first division game. If you just joined us, no, no. Whedon to Lawrenson to Rush. Beautifully played by Rush. And Lawrenson through. Walsh is making ground. And Rush has gone darting through as well to no avail. Goal kick. Some lovely play there, Brian, wasn't it? Um, and, and Rush making himself available. Great return for Lawrence and Tukum. I think I think they'd be a little bit disappointed with the final delivery there. Come on, come on. Walsh. Walsh. season for Chelsea and one rush to Benison and an offside against Paul Walsh Brian I think it's a measure of how well Liverpool have now settled I mean they have taken the game to Tottenham very well and I think Grobler there just chesting the ball that was probably on his second touch of the of the game I think he's just had a back pass to him and uh, I think Liverpool have really settled in well. Crespi. Ardilas. Johnston. And here's Richard Goff. Straight to Johnston.
Aguilo. Adidas. Again. Pommel. Delicate skills. And from Ardiles. Already in his opening minutes, there's some uh, skillful stuff out there from both sides. Goff now for Tottenham. Paul Allen. A chance to run. He was half stopped by Spackman, and the referee quite rightly allowed the game to go on. Mulby. What a lovely ball there, but cut out by Mabbott. Thomas. Adidas. Played there, well waited for Paul Allen. Are there problems here? No, it was blocked there. The five Allen shot by Gary Gillespie. Abbott and now Whelan. Certainly, plenty of good movement about this game at the moment. Rush now taking it up for Liverpool. Holby hustled unfairly from behind by Steve Hodge. Free kick to the